Before you can start developing for ARM's Design Start Cortex-M processors with Vivado, there are a number of packages and support files that you need to install and configure, and these files come from a range of different sources. In this video we're going to download and install all of the third-party files that you need. Then we're going to map our project directory to a local drive in Vivado, and then we're going to configure Vivado by adding our hardware and software repositories. Before we begin, you'll need to have downloaded and extracted the ARM Design Start Cortex M package from the ARM developer website, and you'll need Vivado 2018.2 or later installed. So we're going to start by downloading and copying the Digilent board files into the Vivado installation path. The FPGA board uses this file for the Xilinx IP integrator tool to access the pins. So, in your browser, navigate to this URL, then click here on the link to install the board files for Vivado. Click on the download link at the top of the page to get the zip file, and then extract it to a local folder. Open the directory and go to the folder New, and then copy the contents of this board files folder. We're going to paste these contents into the Vivado installation. So navigate to your local drive and go to Xilinx Vivado 2018.2 or your later version, Data, Boards, Board Files and then paste in here. So now we're going to download and install some Testbench files. These are Verilog simulation models that allow you to simulate the Quad Serial Port Interface or QPSI devices. There is a Micron part on the RT baseboard and a Cypress part on ARM's DAPLINK board, which you need to install if you want to use. So to do this, we need to go to the Micron and then the Cypress websites and download the models. So let's start by going to the Micron website at micron.com. If you haven't already, then you'll need to sign up and register for a new account to get access to the model. In the search box, enter N25Q128A13E underscore 3V underscore micron like this. And then from the results, click on the button to download the model. Then extract the contents of the download into the design start package. So open the directory and in hardware and for the processor and the board, so in our example, M1 for RTA7, Testbench. Once you've done that, you need to then navigate to this new folder and change its name to micron underscore N25Q128A13E, like this. Then go into this folder, open the SIM folder and copy the file called sfdp.vmf. Navigate back out to the testbench directory and paste the file here. Next we're going to cypress.com to download the Cypress model. So here on the site, let's search for the file we need. So in the search bar, enter s25fl128s.zip. Here we can see a link to the Verilog and we can click here to download. So extract the contents of this anywhere locally and then run the executable file. In here, set the destination to the testbench folder, which is the same place that we just copied the Micron files to. Then click Extract. So let's double check that the files have all copied over. So back in the Design Start package, let's go to the testbench folder, and we can see both the Micron folder that we just named and the Cypress directory here. Now we're ready to open Vivado. The first thing we're going to do in here is set the local drive for Windows. This prevents issues when you generate and simulate if you have long file paths. We do this in the TCL console, which opens when you click here. In here, navigate to the root of your design start installation and type XEEC space SUBST space V colon space dot and press return. We're mapping to V, a V drive, but you can map to any local drive you want. So let's quickly check that our directory has mapped across.
For both the installation directory and the mapped drive, there should be no spaces in the file paths as this will cause issues later on. Now let's open the Design Start project. Click Open Project and navigate to the map drive that we just set up. Go to Hardware and choose the folder for your processor and board. So we're going to choose M1 for RTA7 and then M1 for RTA7 again and then select the .xpr Xilinx project file and click OK. The project should open with no errors. Now we're going to add the ARMIP Integrator Hardware repository to Vivado so that any new designs you create can access the Cortex-M processor. So to do this, select Tools, Settings, then IP Defaults. Click on the plus symbol to add a default search path. And navigate to your map drive and open the Vivado directory. Here select the ARM IPI repository and click OK. Now we're going to add the software repository. First, we launch and configure the SDK tool by selecting File, Launch SDK, and we need to set the exported location to our V drive and then Software. And then set the workspace to V, Software, and the folder for your processor and board, and then SDK underscore workspace. Click OK, and if you see a warning about the hardware system being out of date, then click OK. This doesn't matter at this stage. So now this opens the project in the SDK workspace. Now to set the software repository, select Xilinx, Repositories, and under Global Repositories, select New. Navigate to your mapped drive, open the Vivado folder, and select the ARM software repository, and click OK. And here we can see it's added to the repository list. So now you can close the SDK tool and go back to the Vivado project. So here we've installed all the necessary packages and files and configured Vivado so now you're ready to begin developing with ARM Cortex-M for Xilinx FPGA.